Forbes breakfast. I hoped we would never talk about this on the radio. <laughs> I mentioned that、uh, parts of Italy are not as advanced as parts of Britain. This is from personal experience.、Mm -hmm. I've been to Italy many times, and in some of the rural areas, they don't know a toilet from a hole in the ground.、Mm -hmm. They have a porcelain hole in the ground, which for blokes is not that much of a big deal because, let's face it, because we are anatomically equipped, <laughs> the world is our urinal.、Mm -hmm. Not so for women. No, no. It's tricky. Now, Julie and I are planning a trip,、mm -hmm. and we're planning a trip to southern Italy. We're going to Naples、oh, nice. because I've always wanted to see Pompeii. Ah,、oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. And Pompeii and Vesuvius, and we've booked day trips. Previously, when we've been to Italy, we've had this porcelain hole in the ground toilet issue.、Mm -hmm. So we are definitely going to run into one of these toilets. Julie is not keen on this at all.、Mm. So I mistakenly, half joking, <laughs> said to her. Well, you could always get a shiwi. <laughs> In case you don't know what these are, these are a, a, a feminine adapter.、Mm -hmm. It's designed for women who are at concerts,、yeah. so they can use urinals. They originally they originally came out、yeah. um, for festivals、yes. because the toilets, the ladies' toilets, were always completely stacked. Yes, the guys was always em were always empty. It、uh -huh. was annoying. They just、yes. need to nip behind a fence. Yes, and have a little pot. Yes, and so they. Somebody came、yes. up with this the crazy idea this of the shiwi. This device.、Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, she sent off for one. It arrived yesterday. <laughs> uh, uh, it comes in a、it? case like a glasses case. Right. You don't want to get them confused. <laughs> no. <laughs> so well, I'm uncomfortable with the whole thing. Now, my biggest fear、mm. with the weather the way it is, I just hope it doesn't snow today. Why? Well, I don't want to get home and outside the flat there's a signature. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the show. We've got a medical emergency on our hands. You probably know that the、uh, traffic has been bad on the A1M. There's been accidents northbound between five and six. This has caused problems southbound. Gary's on the phone. Good morning, Gary. Good morning.、Uh, you've had an interesting morning. My wife's pregnant. She actually went into labour during the night. Yeah.、Um, well, we've been stuck on the A1. We've been diverted round for a network, which is at a complete standstill. So we're stuck there at the moment. Can you put your Mrs. Tracy on the phone for us? Hello. Tracy, how are you hanging in there? Yeah, fine. Okay. Now, are the emergency services aware of your problem? No, we、uh, managed to flag down a police car. Yeah. And they said if we needed to, we'll just have to call an ambulance. There's nothing I can do. Right. But that's not really going to help when the traffic's at a standstill. Okay. Is this your first baby? No, fifth. Fifth, okay.、Yeah. So you've got quite a lot of experience in this area. So based on your experience, how close do you think you are to giving birth? Well, hopefully not not too far away, but but not too quick. That's going to happen in the car. <laughs> yes. All right. Can I check back in with you in a few minutes' time? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Whatever you do, don't push. All right. All right then. Okay. Talk to you soon, Gary and Tracy.、Bye. Goodness me. Thank you. Bob's breakfast. We want to know what have you done that is a random act of kindness. Now, here's one that I'm not accepting, where you wave a pedestrian to cross the road in front of you when you're driving. That's nice, eh? And that's not a random act of kindness. There's nothing random or kind about that. You know what they're doing, don't you? What? They're lording it over you. They're letting you. No, they're letting no, no. You cross. No, they're not. What they're doing is they're going. You want to be a peasant. <laughs> <laughs> Me, however, I am a lord here in my carriage, <laughs> and、uh, I will permit you to cross, peasant. You may cross now. That's what they're doing. What would you? That's what it's all about. What would you rather they do?、Would、Just carry they... on, and I'll wait. Because that's what they're doing. I, I know that's what they're doing. Because if you go, no, and wave them through,、mm. they get really angry. Trust me, <laughs> have you done that? Yeah, they get like. <laughs> They go, oh, <laughs> because you've just changed the paradigm.、Mm. Now you've gone. Oh no, no, no! You are not the lord letting me through as the peasant. I am now the lord of the manor, and I shall let you pass. <laughs> so once you <laughs> once you turn that round on them, they hate it. David, you might be able to help. Reference to the lady and gentleman expecting a baby in Edinburgh. If they drive through the lanes, the lanes are empty, so I'll be able to zigzag through to Stevenage. They come into the back of Datchworth, yes, and then go 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 through the lanes. 
if they've got a sat nav on the phone, they'll be able to link that in. Yes. And get to Steve It'll probably only take them about 20 minutes. All right, thank you very much. Cheers. All right, cheers, thanks. All right, me. thank you. If you've any other advice or you know what to do here or if you can give Gary any advice on how to be a midwife, 01438 422 106. 106 Bob FM. Let's get the latest news now from Chris Hilbert. A full body suit lie detector could be used in British police stations within the next few years. Um, you don't need a full suit though, you only need the pants. Because liars, the pants are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, uh, how far do you reckon you are from the Lister right now? Well, we've just called an ambulance, so. You have uh, actually called an ambulance now. Mum's on the phone to the ambulance because Mum's sat in the back. Oh, your mum's in the back of the car as well. Yeah. Well, at least yeah. it's not just you and Gary, because if Gary falls to pieces, maybe your mother can s stay together. Can we cross back to you in a little bit and see how things are going? You can. Okay, it's Gary, Tracy, and her mum, somewhere in Nebworth. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Not far from here. It it's a drama that's it's unfolding. It's gripping the home counties on Bob FM. <laughs> I have to ask the question. Hmm. Clarkson, Paxman, Kyle. Is there a Jeremy on TV that isn't a knob? <laughs> <laughs> Mark's on the phone, you think you can help? Hey Graham, um, if they're near you at Nebworth, why don't they shoot through Nebworth Hurst Junction 7 where the motorway's open and they're straight down the only one to, um, Lister? Oh, cut through Nebworth House, I get you. You go in the back entrance of Nebworth House. Yeah. Go, th go across the grounds of the house and then come out at the junction on the roundabout. At the Novotel. Brilliant, Mark, thank you so much. Okay, speak to you soon, Graham. Cheers. 106, Bob FM. Harrison Ford's been injured, as we've been hearing, after the plane he was piloting suffered engine failure and he crash-landed onto a golf course in Los Angeles. You know, the uh, cockpit voice recorder has been found. Really? Yes, I have the audio. I got a bad feeling about this. Bob's breakfast. The most stress your kids have ever caused you. Diana. My son Glenn, when he was four, he burnt my house down. He, uh, hang on, wait, he burnt the house down? How did he do that? He lit a little bit of paper under his brother's bed, uh. and he expected his brother to go to bed and find his bed gone. Yes. But he ended up burning the whole house down, and we lost everything. And we lived off car boot sales for ages and ages and ages. Where did you live? Me and my husband at the time slept around his mum's on the city. <laughs> oh, dear. I, I was cooking sausages, and my daughter's boyfriend said, you're burning the sausages, and I thought, no, I'm not. And then your house is on fire, so we got out quick, and it just, it's just everything. Well, I'm glad Most everybody was safe. Damage. Wow. Yeah. All right, do you ever let him forget it now? How old is he now? He's 28 now. He lives in New Zealand. Oh. <laughs> He remembers it. <laughs> oh, oh, he remembers it when he burnt the house down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you very much, Diana. Bob. Gary, where are you right now? Yeah, we're still at Oakfields Road, just waiting for the ambulance now. Okay, so if someone around Nebworth is hearing ambulance sirens and seeing blue lights in your mirror, please do whatever you can. I know the traffic is just gridlocked because of that problem on the A1M, but just get up onto the verge or the curb or just let them get through because they've got to get to them. So how is Tracy? Not great, but she's doing okay. Can we talk to Tracy, Gary? Uh, at the moment, no. She's um, having contractions again. All right, hang on in there, Gary. Thank you. It seems we've not heard anything from North Korea for a little while, but no. now uh, they've published 310 new patriotic slogans. So, uh, ways of supporting the country uh, through... Uh, through bad haircuts? Yeah, through bad haircuts. Just been having... Through looking through his... binoculars that we're not sure what he's looking at? <laughs> what is he looking at? Every single photo. Yeah, he's looking it? through binoculars. Yeah. Uh, well, they, they've published more than 300 slogans. They all want you to worship the supreme leader. What's Diana Ross got to do with North Korea? <laughs> Where are you, Connie? Yeah, I'm waiting for a bus at the moment. Where at? Heart for Trees. We've been asking people to commit random acts of kindness. Oh, yes. 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 Uh, have you committed one recently? Not recently, no. <laughs> uh, 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 is there anyone else at the bus stop? Yes, another lady that catches the bus. Can you quickly put her on? Hold on. All right. You're talking to Graham. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Oh, she seems keen. Hi, Graham. Uh, good morning, Graham. Mac, Amy Stevenson, how are you? Uh, good morning. I'm very well. Thank what's, you. What's I'm your, the rain. What's your name? Harriet. Harriet. Um, where are you catching the bus to? Hartford Town, so I can get the train. Okay. And how much is your bus fare going to be? It's going to be £1.50. Okay. Can you put Connie back on the phone? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Con Hello? Connie? Yeah? How about you give you pay for Harriet's bus fare? It's £1.50. Yeah, it's all right, oh, You'll do that? Oh, okay, no. when you get on the bus, I want you to yeah. say to Harriet, this this trip's on me. Okay, will do. All right, that's good. All right, Harriet, I'm paying your bus there. Thank you very much. Well, look at that. All right. You can, all right. Can, can it's we check? coming there. It's coming there. Oh, the bus oh, is coming okay. now. What, how far away is it? Is it, is it, is it close? It's just coming to the bus stop is, now. Is it coming? Are you about to get to, onto the bus? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. Let's, let's hear you actually commit this random act of kindness and pay for Harriet's ticket as well. Let's hear that. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Hold on. Okay. So, the, the Morning. Bus. Can I pay for Harriet's bus fare, please? <laughs> Stop FM. This is the bus driver. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. Right, so you, you're okay? You've paid Harriet's fare now? Yeah, yeah. You're all set? Yes, we're off now. Look uh, at that! It's another random act of kindness on Bob FM! Okay. <laughs> Michael Button has just tweeted with a photograph of the ambulance on its way to you. So hang on in there, Tracy and Gary. That looks like good news. Michael says, just seen the ambulance by the Vauxhall dealership. They're en route. So good luck on that one. 01438 422 Good morning. Who's this? Oh, good morning. My name's Kevin. I've just driven in from uh, Stevenage right away through Nedworth and, and that way up to Welling Garden City. Yeah. And uh, just let you know that it's to add injury to the wound at the cl clock roundabout there's an articulated lorry that is actually just broken down on the roundabout itself which is now blocking the traffic it can't go anywhere okay hey thank you very much kev okay cheers That's right. let's okay, hope now, that uh doesn't stop the ambulance getting through to gary and it, tracy it will all right thanks for the update kev Appreciate okay. it. All right. All right. Okay. okay. We'll go live to Gary and Tracy in a bit on Bob FM. Bob's Breakfast. Morbidly obese people should be given a free flu jab on the NHS each year, say government advisors, Public Health England. They're going to have to give them some incentive. So flu jab on its own is not going to do it. You don't think? Flu jab and cake? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Just had this via Facebook from Tracy's mum. Just want to thank everyone for all their help and advice. We are now all aboard an ambulance heading for Lister Hospital. Tracy, doing well, considering. Good news. Keep you posted. Or Bob FM. If you were listening on Friday, you would have heard Connie call up. She called from the bus stop. And I said to her, find a stranger at the bus stop and pay their bus fare. And she found Harriet. Yeah. And she paid Harriet's bus fare, and we heard them get on the bus. Mm -hmm. And it was nice. It was a real random act of kindness. Yeah. But turns out, things went horribly wrong. Connie's back on the phone. So tell us what happened after the bus set off. As the bus went out of the village, yeah. um, there'd been an accident, and right. so we was at a standstill. So half of us thought, oh, well, we, you know, perhaps the driver will let us off and we'll start walking. Yeah. By the time I got down to the roundabout, the bus passed us. <laughs> no! Oh! And he didn't pick you up! You did a random act of kindness by paying a stranger's <laughs> bus fare on that yeah. very bus trip. You got off the bus because you thought it'd be quicker because they, and the bus driver drove right past well, you! you couldn't stop. He just couldn't stop. I am sorry, buddy. God. Well, that was all right. That was my fault because we should have stayed on. <laughs> well, no! Oh, it was his fault he because have you back no. up. That was a random act of unkindness. Hmm. Well, oh, you know, no. Oh, mind. I am never so disappointed. Because kindness is supposed to be contained. Karma is supposed to kick in and help here. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> me, there's been a glitch in the Matrix. <laughs> Turn your knob to Bob. Good morning, Tracy's mom. Good morning. What's your name? Linda. Linda. Bit of a morning yes. for you. Oh. Slightly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. Okay, so where are you right now? 
Like we're now, Tracy's now in her, in the hospital, in the room where she's going to actually give birth. She's been examined now. Mm-hmm. Gary's with her. I've got walkabout so I can talk to you on the phone. <laughs> Fantastic. And how is everybody bearing up? Um, when the ambulance first got there, Tracy's blood pressure was really high. Dangerously high mm-hmm. because of the stress and everything. But once she'd settled into the ambulance, by the time we got here to the hospital, it had gone down to normal. Yeah, that must have been a really... How long did it take for the ambulance to get there? Because we kind of lost contact what, after Gary had called the ambulance. Oh, you called the ambulance, didn't you? You called, I called the ambulance, yeah. yeah. I took it upon myself because I was getting to a point where I thought, this is not good, this is going to happen in the car if I don't do something. Right, so Mum could took control. En- yeah. Enough of you messing about. Never mind yeah. Gary playing the yeah. hero, could try to drive her to the hospital. I'm Absolutely. taking over now. You'll do as I say. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, I found the ambulance, and this is where we are now, so... Okay, and how were the team in the ambulance? Were they good? They were absolutely fantastic. Great. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. You know the whole of the home counties has been following this story. We have, we have picked up on a few bits and pieces. <laughs> I've just turned my phone back on. Yes. And my phone just almost exploded, so... <laughs> we have picked up on a b- bits and pieces. Obviously, Trace is not quite with it at the minute. Yes. Um... <laughs> But she will be really surprised of all the interest. Okay, well, we'll check in with you in a bit, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. All right, that'll be okay, good. Then. We'll keep all up right, today. Thank you. <laughs> Bob <laughs> FM. Chan Chan and Yang Guang are back in the news again. These this two isn't pandas. The, this is the pandas that they keep saying are pregnant. Mm-hmm. Is there a bank holiday coming up again? Is there? Uh, there is. How There's about at least that? a bank holiday. Yeah. It just if you know, it's just before every bank holiday when zoos are looking for customers. The pandas in Edinburgh Zoo are suddenly pregnant. They've been pregnant now for I think three years. Uh, started in 2011. You know, oh, right, so that's, yeah. what's that, uh, four years? Yeah, Edinburgh Zoo. Uh, it's quite the gestation period. It's a long time, yes. isn't it? Yes. Well, now, turkey based is at the ready. Oh, They've had to go down that small Oh, of, dear. Yeah. If the pandas aren't in the mood... Uh, they are also going to try for uh, natural means as well, so they're going to leave these two pandas to romance each other for a little bit longer. How's that worked out over four years? They even showed them panda porn, didn't they? They did. They yeah, showed them yeah. videos of pandas at it. Raunchy videos of pandas mm. was um, one of the ways that they were trying to tempt people in. Uh, the last pandas in the UK, uh, Ming Ming and Bao Bao, mm-hmm. left the zoo in London in 1994 after failing to mate. So how long were they there? They were there about ten years, weren't they? It was a long time. Yeah, they, they were there. They failed right. to mate and the panda porn didn't work. and. Mm-hmm. The pandas were probably just complaining. They were just, I don't know, the acting in this is terrible. And that panda that arrives delivering the pizza, <laughs> I mean, that's not very believable. Bob. You're at the Lister Hospital now, Linda. Yes. And what's the latest? Baby's just being monitored now. Going to monitor her for 20 minutes, and then they're going to take it from there. Okay, so she hasn't given birth yet? When you said the, no, she hasn't, no. But they're, they're monitoring the condition of the yes. baby. But yes. everything looking good? Everything's looking fine. Contractions are a lot stronger now. Okay, and Gary, is he doing okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I think we're all a bit jittery. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all a bit in shock at the minute, but yeah. The whole of the home counties is in shock. I know that we've just said that. I've just got a call from home to say that. <laughs> oh, this is mad. Um, ITV News is going around my house within the hour to interview uh, two of the girls. <laughs> yeah, they're coming here too. So, yeah, this <laughs> is the big story of the morning. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Some breaking news, we've just heard that Tesco has reported full-year statutory losses of £6.37 billion. That's the latest from the Bob FM Newsroom, more at 7.30. Thanks a lot, Chris. And if you're listening from Tesco's, uh, remember you can win £1,501 if you can work out what Bob's doing. I know that won't solve all of your problems, but every little helps. Bob FM. Home counties. Good morning, Linda. <laughs> it was quite chaotic yesterday, oh, wasn't it? It was just, we took, me and Tracy just sitting in there, just going through all the, the, the Facebook and the, everything on our phones and just absolutely astounded by it all. You became world famous. Yes, we realised that. It even went to America as well. Oh yeah, no, it's gone around the world, this one. This oh, is a big story. <laughs> yeah, it's gone around the world, this one. Australia, Canada, everybody's talking about this. Oh, goodness me. But a happy ending. A very happy ending. She's absolutely adorable. 
Now, you're in that hospital right now. You're, I am, Can yeah. you put Tracy on the phone? Yep, hang on a minute. Fantastic. Hello. Tracy, how are you? Hello, um, it's sore. <laughs> <laughs> now, yesterday morning, I remember talking to you, and I said, uh, Gary reckons you, you could be another couple of hours. Can you hang on that long? You said, I don't think so. Yeah, no, it was, it was a bit of a stressful situation, which... Ended up, and we got to hosp hospital in the end about quarter past nine. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't really sort of like notice time really after that, but it all ended up in complications and a bit traumatic. Did um, it really? What were the complications? Yeah. Um, well, she, uh, even though it was progressing, we got to the hospital and they checked me and I was already seven centimetres dilated. And then basically, um, it was a case of waiting for her to arrive at that point but with a blood pressure that was still high on and off yeah. um, I then um, tried to push her out but it just I was just so tired and I've been through so much that they practiced for theatre and said that it might possibly have to be an emergency cesarean uh -huh. but if they could do it by the forceps then they would yeah. and they did but um, I've never been through anything in any of the births before like that so it was quite quite traumatic because this is like, your fifth uh, one yeah yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. and last <laughs> oh, 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 you don't even want to think about that. This is the last one. Okay. And last. Okay. And um, she, she's a beautiful baby? She is really lovely, yeah. She's just been laid most of the night in a cot, just laying, wondering what all the other babies are crying about, just laid there, really chilled out, really. Ah, uh, are you yeah. looking at her right now, are you? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, and, so and, and what um, weight? She was seven five. Yeah. So she's, she's a really lovely colour. She's got quite a bit of hair and, she, she just really chilled out and laid back, so hopefully she stays that way. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you call her, Tracy? Melody Sophia. Melody? Yeah, M-E-L-O-D-Y. You, decide, you decided not to go with Bob? Decided not, not to go with Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Because that would have been my, you know, that, that would have been my <laughs> choice. The Bob baby, you know, yeah. Bob. No, but she's, she's been Melody... Sophia, right from the offset. So okay. We, we couldn't really change it, really. Well, <laughs> ev everyone who listens to Bob FM feels like feels like they're they're uh, an ex part of the extended family now because we all went <laughs> we all went through it with you. We all went through the stress. You did. You did. Well, Tracy, thank you very much for letting us share your story. Well, thank you for for kind of making it a bit worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> well, on behalf of of everybody uh, who listens to Bob. Thank you so much to Melody. And Melody, if you can't be Bob, maybe on behalf of the listeners to the radio station, Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. Exactly. Bob's your uncle. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bob's Breakfast.